my hand. Reach your right hands up to heaven. Reach your right hands up to heaven. And say, Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Say, Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. Praise the name of Jesus. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. The reason why we ask him to hold our hands because we need him every hour. As we journey through this pilgrim land, as we struggle on earth, as we fight the warfare of life on earth, we need him to hold us by our hands so that we can go through this pilgrim land. We're here only for a season. This land is not my home. We're just passing through. So we ask him to protect us. By his mighty power, by his saving power. And when we ask the request, we don't only ask it to leave it. We said, Lord, I'm not good enough. Even my feeble cry, even my feeble plea. Hallelujah. Oh, dear Lord, when you hear, you look down upon us. Blessed Jesus. Because we are hoping one day. When the trump of God shall sound. Glory. The dead in Christ shall rise. Hallelujah. We shall meet him there. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. What a blessed hope. Hallelujah. What a blessed hope. Hallelujah. That one day. We shall meet Jesus. And see him. Face to face. Let us rejoice while we are here. As one some writer penned it. And this little song he penned. So we need to have a little heaven down here sometimes. We need to have a little heaven down here sometimes. And sometimes when we rejoice, it's a taste of the heavenly realm. But a place to be happy is here. Amen. In the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. The time to be happy is now. The place to be happy is here. And the way to be happy oh Lord Jesus is to make others happy. Be kind and be gentle. Those who are about us, they can be happy. Let's be an example of a believer. And all that we do, for, brethren, let me tell you, if I could help somebody as I live on this earth, then my living shall not be in vain. Your living shall not be in vain. Our goal, our objective, is to be helpful to one another. Holy greetings this morning to Evangelist Gail. My wife, Evangelist Gail. To Evangelist Dawes. Evangelist Clark. Evangelist Dawes. Missionary Blagrove. All of the missionaries that are here this morning. Our musicians, the two young Blagrove, praise the name of Jesus. I saw Sister Melanie smiling and playing when she gets deep into the rhythm. Praise the name of Jesus. My God, who has seasoned the drum as he drummed the drum. My God, my God, my God, my God. It's truly to our technical. Operator, Evangelist Clark, so 
saints and brethren. And surely today, Brother Stephen is in the house. Praise the name of Jesus. Welcome, Brother Stephen. In the presence of the Lord, I was only early this morning, not knowing that you were outside here. I was looking on the first day you came to church. And those visitors slip that you had completed. I was looking at it. And when I came up, I saw you in the congregation. Now I had to ask the Lord, you sent me to look through the visitors list this morning. And I took up yours and I transcribed the number into my cell phone. That's how much I did, not knowing that you were here. So it's now in my phone. Please call. <laughs> when I came, I saw him sitting in the audience. Oh. Brethren, there is a God that we serve. Yes. Yes. We cannot deny the power of the Almighty God. Amen. But he knows better than we do. Yes. And he shall direct our path. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Giving God thanks for the cleaning team. The church looks beautiful. It looks clean. It looks clean. I don't even see a speck of paper. The cleaning team. God bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. I was hoping this morning that evangelist Gail would give a strong exhortation. <laughs> and I would close after her. That was the arrangement. Praise the name of Jesus. She sidestepped the arrangement and did all that she could. And said, hey, I will handle it to you now. Praise the name of Jesus. And I think she was able to preach this morning. And I thought I would give her that opportunity to uh, do a little bit. And then I would take it from her. But since she said she has done her part. There's one thing that I have to do. Is turn the Bible to the scripture of the day. Turn the Bible with me to the book of 2 Kings. It's a very long lesson. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we may not get into the meat of this. It has part three evangelist scale. And this doesn't have part two, it has part three. But part one, two, and three can be accomplished at any given time. Praise the name of Jesus. However, I want you to understand uh, concerning the power of God. In the beginning of chapter 4, we'll notice that there was a widow. And the Bible said this widow did not have much. And something that is very interesting to note in verse 1 of chapter 4. It said, now therefore cried a certain woman. Now, he said, cried a certain woman. A woman who was of the wives of the sons of the prophet. So, she was a wife of one of the sons of one of the prophets. Said 
to Elisha. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be made slaves. Now, this family, they were living together and the husband died. <clears throat> Obviously, things were bad with them and they took some money or some values so they were in debt. So when the husband died, the poor widow was not able to pay the money that she owed. So the creditors came up and said, Oh, your sons look like strong men. They can be good slaves. You cannot pay. Your two sons shall be bond men. Shall be slaves to me. Because your husband died and didn't repay me what he owed. And the miracle of God. You see, the woman said to, to Elisha, my husband was a servant of God. My husband feared the Lord. My husband did what he should have done while he was alive. Yes. Now he's dead. Elijah comforted her in a very special way. Something that she didn't understand. But look, he said, and Elijah said unto her, What shall I do to thee? I want you to openly tell me. What do you have in your house? That can action instead of your sons. What value do you have in your house? That can be used instead of your two sons. And she said, thine handmaid had not anything in the house. Saving one pot of oil. A few days ago, or weeks ago, sometimes ago, or not long ago, I spoke to you about obedience. To follow the instruction. The instructions of he who God has given the authority to govern with you. And sometimes we take it for a joke. Don't understand how serious this is. But obedience is key. And very fundamental. To a child of God that will reap the joy of heaven. So Elisha said unto her. More than one. Go abroad. Go out. Get some vessels. From all your neighbor. Make sure the vessels are empty. Borrow as much as you can. I don't want to see you come back with a few. Now, these are specific directions given by the prophet. Go and borrow as much vessels as you can. And he looked at the woman and said, don't bring me a few. Yes. I need much vessels. Because the prophet knows what God is about to do. Yes. But the obedience of the woman will make a difference. Yes. And when the Lord come in, Thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. I mean the sons.
sons who are supposed to be bondsmen, the sons who are supposed to be slaves, you close the door with those vessels and your two sons. And thou shalt pour out the oil that you have in those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. Let's go back. Let's back up to verse 2. Elisha said, and she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house, saving a pot of oil. One pot of oil. In verse 4, the prophet is telling the widow that she should close the door with the vessels and her sons with her and she'll pour the oil into the vessels. You'll understand some things that God has revealed to you you cannot walk and talk and tell your friends. Close the door and keep the faith intact. You see, brethren, sometimes you, you have the faith in God. When you share it with somebody, they derailed your faith. Because they sort of share their opinion. And they're swayed with their opinion. Close the door. And obey the command of the man of God. When therefore set it aside. So the Bible says she went from him and shut the door upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. The time came when the vessels were full. The vessels were full. That she said unto her son, Bring me a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel that is left that is not full. And she has one pot of oil. One pot of oil. And she owes a great debt. The man of God spoke to her and gave her instructions and she obeyed. And she cautioned her, none of you get as much vessels as you can. And when the woman had poured out and all the vessels that were gathered were full and there was still more oil to pour, she sent one of her sons for more vessels. Said, Mommy, you don't have any more vessels. They're all filled. This reminds me of passage of scripture in the book of Malachi. When he said, if I will not pour you out a blessing, do that there be no more room to contain. You must prove God now herewith. And she, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there will not be enough room that you have to contain this blessing. That was obedience. He was speaking to the people to give unto the Lord. As the Lord prospered you, you give unto the Lord. And if you give to the Lord, the promise is that he will pour you out a blessing. That room will not be there to contain the blessing. Now that is a promise. Some weeks ago we spoke concerning.
concerning the reason why we pray. The three main reasons why we pray. And every prayer that we pray will fall into one of these categories. And they're very simple. One, we pray to maintain the relationship with God. Sweet fellowship and sweet communion with Him. We pray that all the promises written and given to us may be fulfilled. Amen. For while we are in need, He will supply it. Yes. So we pray that the promises that are written in this, the holy book of the Almighty God, be fulfilled. Amen. And thirdly, we pray that man may be saved. Amen. And if all the prayers that we pray would fall within this category, or these three main categories. For when somebody is sick, you're praying for the health, you're asking God to save them. If you can't even heal you, to save you. It's very significant. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil. Pay your debt. Live you and your children and be at rest. 